person trial. Okay, so that's just a, a few vignettes about where exploration is going. Here's the slide here. Um, there's Quebec, Montreal, and so this play for the Utica, which is actually separate from the New York play, separated by the Adirondack uh, <coughs> Massif, basically. This is a, um, but it, it's, quote, Utica Shale. They call it the Collingwood there. Um, there are a lot of companies with, uh, with leaseholds there, and there's more drilling going on as one goes up even out onto the Cascade. So um, there's some enthusiasm about it, but you know, people are you know, sort of up and down about how good it's really going to be. Nonetheless, I uh, didn't emphasize this, but Questair brought in a well that flowed 12 million cubic feet per day um, a couple of years ago. So that's looking pretty good if that's the level of production. Just showing the gas bay peninsula. So this is all leased in here. So there's a lot of interest in uh, Canada's being said. In Ohio, this is the activity so far. These are Utica wells. Um, I think, you know, Ohio is ahead of Pennsylvania in um, the activity with which the survey um, in DP jumps on things. But they have a pretty nice website with a lot of available data and access to the public, and they also um, you know, are keeping track of what these, the purpose of these wells is going to be. So you can see Utica wells permitted um, are in blue, uh, permitted horizontal wells in red, and there's Belmont County, and that's the uh, console um, one. And then uh, Utica completions, here are the wells that we know of so far, including Green County and, and uh, Beaver, and then legacy Utica producers and shows. Those are all in the green, which are vertical wells, and they were not uh, stimulating to any They're probably flowing a few hundred thousand cubic uh, feet per day, but still respectable. And there's oil. Okay, so let's go back in time a little bit um, and look at the uh, Utica Shale. This is paleogeography, according to, I have lost his name in my memory bank, but uh, he's at Northern Arizona University. He does a lot of these really beautiful, uh, you got it? Blakey. Blakey, yeah, thanks. Ron Blakey. And uh, this is the, um, Port of Mission Seaway here, you can see this broad area, which is fairly shallow, an area of deeper water. And this is an island dark, basically um, a volcanic edifice that is uh, closing against North America. And it's a collision of this with uh, the North American margin that creates the tectonic orogeny and eventually causes uh, black shale deposits to form the space. So, there it goes. All right, so you can see it's closing in. And the result, and this is actually more, I want you to study this closely. There will be an exam on everything on here. But, um, I, I throw this on here to show you the extent of the Appalachian Basin for the Utica, which is in gray. and to show you that here's the Marcellus level up here, and the Utica is right uh, there. So you can see that as one goes from the southeast towards the west, um, the thickness of the entire unit thins. This is everything from the Cambrian through the Devonian in this case, right? And so there are actually several orogenies here, but. Um, you can see that the distance between the Marcellus, vertical distance between the Marcellus and the Utica is diminishing as one goes into Ohio. And um, the Utica is shoaling as well as Marcellus, but that fades out well before um, you get far into Ohio. 
I'll show you a little bit more of that. Okay, so here's our um, requisite uh, plectectonic diagram from some of our favorites for Dewey back in the 70s. And I just show you this to illustrate that in the earlier um, Ordovician into the middle Ordovician, there was a broad carbonate platform. Uh, it's been likened to the Bahamas, but it, it's, it's huge and it's on a passive margin. And that went off into deep, deeper water. And then um, as uh, time went on, during Trenton Utica time, there were some uh, tectonic events and uh, the collision occurred. Here's the island arc out here. Thrust faulting, loading of thrust sheets on this part, and that caused subsidence in the basin and um, ultimately allowed for deeper water black shales to be deposited. And then that was covered by uh, later deposits called loss deposits, which are basically terrigenous material and shed off the mountains, much like you would find coming off the Rockies or something uh, a few million years ago. So um, basically, this is all non-marine. So we went from marine carbonate platform to a tectonically induced uh, basin setting and then to non-marine rocks. And I'll show you some um, cross sections that illustrate what that's going on. So here's a little bit more fanciful. There's the shelf, and there are some isolated platforms here and some deeper water. And the deeper water environments are where uh, these black shales uh, initially were deposited, but as tectonics went on and sea level rose, the margins of some of these platforms were flooded and covered with black shales. And then during subsequent sea level withdrawal, substance uh, slowed down there were carbonates again over the top. So the black shales are kind of encased in uh, carbonate rocks in this case. All right, so how deep is the Utica? And this is structure on the top of the Trenton limestone. And so if you remember going way back to the first slide, the Trenton, I probably didn't point that out well enough for you, so let's go back. Um, the Trenton and the Black River are Ordovician limestones. These were these platform deposits that I just showed you diagrammatically. And the Utica, per se, directly overlies them. It actually interfingers somewhat with the uppermost Trenton, but we'll, we'll talk more about that. So it directly overlies these um, units. And so the Trenton limestone is a kind of a mappable surface, and these are depths which you can't read, but um, they are on the order of greater than 12,000 in this part of the basin, so in the easternmost part of the basin, and then they shoal to uh, near outcrop level, so 2,000 to 1,000 feet out here. The Utica, um, actually only extends about to here in Ohio and up and around. Um, and it's only, as we'll see, uh, perspective in this area. The Trenton covers the whole area, but the Utica Shale is somewhat more restricted. Its distribution is similar to that of the Marcello Shale, but actually um, it's more widespread in Ohio and thicker in Ohio than the Marcello. All right, the other thing you have to memorize, all these terms, but I put this up here that the, um, to illustrate the, the kind of confusing nomenclature because when anybody says they mapped the Utica shale, um, they have to tell you what it is they included because the Utica um, to some is a very restricted unit, to others encompasses a number. In New York it has members, in other places, you know, um, 
it's a general term, but it includes other units that are more informal. So, uh, you know, these, this is the nomenclature, and what we're talking about is this unit right here, just above the Trent limestones, which you can see. There's so-called Utica Shale in parts of Pennsylvania. Around here, the, it's the Antes Coburn Formation. So if you want to go out and see an outcrop, you can go right down on, I'm going to show you a section measured at this outcrop by one of our students, but you can go on 322 and just before the Lewis, Lewis Town, sorry, just before the Reedsville exit, um, you want to pull over if you can. There's a little kind of turnoff place. And right at the end of the outcrop, that's just beyond the Reedsville exit, is um, the uppermost trend into the anti shale, which is the Indica equivalent. Now it turns out that you know you could include part of the Reedsville shale in that as well because it's sort of organic carbon rich. The underlying Coburn is a little organic rich in some of the inner beds. So again, it depends on how you map it. All right, as we go out, um, as I mentioned in Ontario, Quebec, it's the Collingwood formation is the equivalent in New York, which, uh, let's see, is New York here? They don't really go up to New York. Oh, there it is. They just call it the Utica formation, but it has members, as we'll see, and they vary in their properties. And then as one goes into Ohio, there's the Utica Shale, there's also the Point Pleasant, and there's the Cook Formation, all of which are um, organic part of rich and potential source beds. So, and this is a little simpler that just illustrates that. So this is this is the one you really want to try to focus on. Utica Point Pleasant, Cope, those are terms that you'll see. Um, Utica Shale is a general sort of name that it's, that's applied. Now it turns out that many of these formations actually have oil and gas in them, especially in Ohio and Western Pennsylvania, and that probably was derived from the Utica and its equivalent. All right, is this too much detail for the non-geologists or not? Okay, so um, we have in New York, uh, a kind of a complex nomenclature. In blue are the limestones, and these are all units that are assigned to the Trent group. Okay, so the Trenton is that lower middle Ordovician um, carbonate that we've been talking about. And these units, the Flat Creek, Dolgeville, and Indian Castle, are all members of the, although they say formation, they're also uh, in some places lumped as members of the Utica formation, okay? So really confusing and kind of hard to keep up. Um, there are ash beds through all of these units, including into the carbonates, and you can see those right out on um, 322 on the bypass out there in, in uh, the uh, lower part of the trend, the middle part of the trend. And we can use these, they have certain characteristics, to actually make timelines for this. So, this is really cool. And as a result, what you find is that the Utica shale members <coughs> interfere with the Trenton in New York. And I'll show you an overview, overview of this in a minute. These layers, the Snake Hill and the Schenectady, um, are clastics that are shed off later. These are the, uh, the you know, terrigenous non Okay, so um, what is this? And, and uh, you know, the thickness of these are up to uh, three or four hundred feet, maybe even seven hundred feet in easternmost New York. So, um, in terms of the Marcellus, we think of the Marcellus as typically being, you know, tens of feet to uh, maybe a hundred feet or something as you go farther east. This is a much thicker unit. And it turns out, I'll show you uh, in a moment, that the organic carbon content of these units is, on average, much lower than the solids. 
so uh, thicker and lower organic carbon, thicker, but if you take the volume of organic carbon, it's equal to or, or exceeds the amount that was in the Marcellus. So they have overall perhaps the same generating potential as the Marcellus, but the gas in place um, per unit volume is going to be lower. So that's going to be the challenge. How do you drill a well and put a lateral in there and um, you know tap the whole unit? It's possibly going to take more wells positioned at various levels to really tap that gas. 